Hello and uh, welcome to the seventh edition of Teen Media's uh, Bujful Talk Series. Uh, very good evening to all of you, and very excited to see you all of you online. Uh, there are more people joining in. Thank you so much. Uh, I can see a lot of familiar faces. Thank you so much, uh, all of you, to join in. Uh, very warm welcome. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. Hello, Jeremy. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Nimit. Thank you so much, all of you. Uh, I can see uh, see more people are coming in. All right, so we have uh, we have a mix of audience uh, registered for the show today from uh, from Malaysia, from Indonesia, from India, Singapore, Thailand, and also other part of the Asian region. So uh, we have been uh, very lucky to have such a mix of audience. All right, so we've been talking about reset, restart, and recover tourism in our past episodes with various uh, leaders from the industry. As we all know that uh, the industry slowly started recovering from the COVID crisis. And we can see slowly countries are opening up. Uh, the domestic flights are uh, started operating. Uh, hotels have started operating in many parts of the region as well. So I'm sure uh, everyone will agree to this that uh, after we have such a standstill situation, the only way to rise up is to collaborate together as a region, the experience and the diversity what we offer is unmatchable compared to the other parts of the regions you know so and the world will always miss traveling to this region so we are talking about malaysia as well as indonesia and they miss the hospitality of our people the smile the way we make them feel when they are our guests and it's just a matter of finding the right framework between the countries which can complement each other or leveraging on each other's uniqueness and strength. So today we have a very interesting topic. We will be discussing about regional tourism collaborative opportunities between Malaysia and Indonesia. Before that, ladies and gentlemen, those who are new to teen media, we are Malaysia's homegrown travel trade digital media. We focus on hospitality and tourism. We believe that uh, it's very important to bring the industry under a common digital platform to share knowledge, ideas, and give the digital exposure so that it's easy for the business to adopt and be innovative and to be relevant in today's time. My name is Prashant Chandra. You can call me PC, and I'll be your host. And I'm very excited to, to be hosting this session today, especially uh, we have two legends in the house today. Uh, we are very lucky to have them. And Teen Media has come up with a series of virtual live talk shows in the previous weeks uh, with the intention to educate and help the tourism industry players about the importance of digitalization in our business, whether it's for products, destinations, or service providers by having the industry leaders from various sectors to share their experiences and advices in front of a live audience like you. We would like to be especially thank you for encouraging uh, you to discuss, you know, helping us to discuss and having this such relevant topics, which is helpful to the growth of our industry. Some of the questions you want us to ask is also included in today's session. And those who are watching this show regularly knows that, you know, we do it a bit differently. Uh, it's not that just me or the guest who talks, you know, we also need you to the viewers to talk to us, share your thoughts, views, suggestions and the comment section below so that we all can learn and share knowledge from each other. Uh, please feel to, uh, feel free to uh, let us know your opinion about today's subject. Do write in the comment section below. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very special request to all of you to share this live feed on your Facebook, on your Twitter wall, uh, you know, your LinkedIn or WhatsApp group so that more people can watch this and keep your questions coming if you don't have your answers if you, we're not answering it today but definitely going to be going to answer and we're going to follow it up for you so keep your questions coming so without any further delay let me introduce you to our honorable guests tonight uh, let me give a brief introduction about them then we will move on to the discussion the first guest we have is uh, honorable dr sri nancy shukri uh, Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Malaysia. Uh, she hails from the state of Sarawak. Uh, she has a law degree from University of Hull, UK. And she was previously served as the chairman of Sarawak Federation of Women Institute twice. Uh, it was in 2013 and 2012. And also, uh, she served as a minister in the Prime Minister's Department until 2018. And the second guest we have is uh, Ms. Nia Nishaya, the Deputy Minister for Marketing from the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy Agency, Indonesia. And she has been in the ministry for past 29 years. Uh, in 2018, she was the UNWTO Regional Chairman for 
East Asia and Pacific in Fiji. And in 2019, uh, she was the vice president in General Assembly from the East Asia and Pacific in the 23rd session of UNWTO General Assembly. So all right, guys. Uh, so those who are just logged in, a very warm welcome. Uh, please share this live feed uh, on your Facebook wall and <coughs> on your WhatsApp group so that more people can watch this together. All right. So, uh, Dr. Sri Nancy, uh, yeah. I would like to ask you, uh, start with you first. So how much uh, is the world has changed for you uh, personally for this COVID, uh, post-COVID, let's say? Yeah. Well, thank you, uh, PC, for having me, uh, Miss Nia. Uh, it's nice to meet up with you tonight. Uh, well, it is a very good opportunity for us to share. Well, when going back to your question, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has had a tremendous impact on many facets of our lives and uh, has contributed to a major shift in the way individuals and organizations work from its impact on the global economy to our daily lives. Um, COVID-19 will have an enormous impact on how we consume, how we learn, how we work and how we socialize and communicate. Um, on March 10, recently, when I was appointed Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, nobody really knew that the whole world would be in a lockdown. Back then, only Wuhan and uh, most of the surrounding Hubei province had imposed a pandemic lock lockdown. The news actually was met with astonishment all over the world. And uh, in an effort to stem the increasing number of COVID-19 cases, the Malaysian government has decided to implement a movement control order, MCO, that started from 18th of March. The order included a ban on public gatherings, so oh, it's really bad for us, uh, religious, sports, social and cultural activities. All Malaysians are barred from traveling abroad and foreign tourists and visitors are banned. For Malaysians returning from abroad, they must undergo health inspection and self-quarantine for 14 days. So uh, schools, universities, government and private premises have been ordered to shut down except for those in essential services. All places of worship and businesses were ordered to be closed except food eateries and shops selling food supplies. The entire country was under quarantine. As a tourism minister, um, especially Ms. Nia, I have been more concerned about how our industry players deal with the impacts since all tourism activities have come to a halt. It was really you know, pressurizing on us as minister. It was a huge challenge for me and the ministry to bear this responsibility. Nevertheless, uh, we have made some remarkable progress with the teamwork and cooperation of the various stakeholders. Uh, and then, um, as a person, I believe that moments of crisis are also an opportunity. What this crisis has taught us is that the ability to adapt quickly to change is vital. More sophisticated and flexible technology use, for example, the use of video conferencing, like what we are doing now, shared applications and teleconferencing is ubiquitous. In fact, COVID-19 fast forward the fourth industrial revolution and digitalization of all services. Actually, we have been imagining how um, uh, industrial revolution, fourth gener uh, the fourth industrial revolution, we're talking about, um, about uh, IoT, talking about AI. You know, so everything has, has now become a reality for us, including public services. Much remains uncertain about the future. It is crucial to envision that we change for the better and not for the worse. That's what I can say about it now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, thank you. Yeah. For, the, for the update. Yeah. So can I uh, move on to uh, Miss Nia? Uh, how much has the world actually changed for you and uh, give us some, some update? Yeah. Thank you, PC. Uh, thank you, Dato Sri Haja. It's a great pleasure to meet you uh, this evening. Uh, um, I think it's quite similar what we have done is like in Malaysia. 
um, I think uh, we in February uh, we closed the border from China, and if someone traveling from China must be quarantined 14 days, and then in March where the COVID-19 occurred for the first time in Indonesia, then we closed all the borders, stop uh, domestic flights and also malls, cancellation all of the events. It's really shocking, actually. Even this is worse of uh, what have used to be in Indonesia, like natural disaster, terrorism. But this is really worse, so uh, a bit shocking. Uh, and I think in the tourism industry is the most impactful because if you look at the tourism, it's, it's not only tourism but related, including the agriculture and everything, because hotel shopping or all closes. Uh, I think on my personal. Uh, what has changed from my experience what has changed with the COVID is I think it teach us how to wash your hand properly. That is the most you can imagine how many times you wash your hand in a day. Uh, so this is uh this is what I feel like something oh yeah we have to be more even uh became more a priority about cleanliness, health and safety. And then we have like working from office, but we don't have like lockdown like in Malaysia. Um, so we call large scale social restriction. That is what we implemented in, especially in certain area and Jakarta, especially because the most pandemic area. Then uh, we just started for last week for Jakarta. It's like uh, how do you, how do we live with COVID because. It, this is very hard, you know, uh, health concern and also economic uh, country for Indonesia. So, President said, how do we cope with this? Still productive during this time, but the carrying capacity now is uh, cut down in terms of the office. We have shifting and then also for the uh, malls, just started open in Jakarta last week, but with, uh, sorry, this, yeah, last week, with the carrying capacity only 50%. So cutting down the capacity, even the flight already open for domestic flight, this is only for business purposes, not for leisure. Uh, this is what uh, digital, I think the same, Ibu uh, Dato Sri Haja, digital becomes uh, really plays an important role. Even we are in the office, but for meeting, uh, still using Zoom. So this is uh, something that uh, changed uh, our uh, life. Thank you. Right, thank you. you so much, uh, Miss Nia. Uh, thank you for the updates. Uh, uh, so I'll uh, let me move on to uh, Brother Sri Nancy. Uh, tell us a uh, little bit about uh, your personal journey towards uh, being the tourism minister. Uh, as you know, you are our uh, tourism minister, and we all like to know more about uh, your personal journey. Yeah, as you know, um, tourism contributes uh, to Malaysian 15.3% to the GDP for uh, Malaysia. So um, tourism ministry actually is a diversified organization that encompasses not only tourism, but also art, culture, food, environment, education, health, agriculture, you name it. You know, we have a lot of sectors, varieties of sectors that come under tourism. Having said that, um, I had to do a lot of thinking and planning on what I ought to do. You know, suddenly things happen. Actually, um, tourism is a very interesting industry. But when things happen, you know, suddenly you're locked down, you're not knowing what to do. But I mean, as a minister, I can't afford to sit down. So I had to do a lot of thinking. Uh, this is where you're talking about resetting. I believe uh, that whatever our challenges are, there surely will be a solution to it, inshallah, to me. Well, hence, um, the thing is, uh, I have a very, very, um, a very strong team. I've always been uh, determined to move forward for the sake of the nation. But with the support of the strong team that we have in the ministry, I am very confident that uh, we could move forward um, much faster because I am not only supported by my team in the ministry, uh, I am also supported by industry players. They have been giving us feedback on what ought to be done, you know, how they're going to, they, they want to help us to rebuild or to rebuild the company or to reboot the, the, the economy and we want to grow. We want the economy to grow faster. So everybody 
um, plays a role in how we should um, move on. So I'm considered very lucky because through the engagements that we have, you know, that gives me more confident that we were, we will be able to move on. And um, with with the results of our engagements, we we were able to um, compile or also um, gather information what the industry players really need which we relate to the government and as a result of that the government provides a lot of assistance not only to the nation but also the industry players so with that uh, we are i'm i say i should say that i'm very blessed because um, my team has been very they've been working hard you know day and night thinking of um what is next you know our strategy we have short term strategy we have mid term strategy we have long term strategy and how do we move on strategically uh, this how we look into how we should um, reset ourselves reset our plans and then uh, because things change from time to time actually um I would have thought that because like uh, others, they were saying that um, we will only start to move by the end of the year. But it looks like you now we are moving much, uh, much. We, we are going to start much uh, faster than that. Now it's only June that we are we're beginning to open up, you know, more businesses and more people to participate in the industry, in the economy. And uh, I'd like again to thank that in, in Malaysia, we're so lucky that we have the health DG who have been very, very, um, um, very if, if effective in whatever he's doing, he's very efficient, that he had also been recognized by the, the rest of the world for being a very, um, um, a very efficient DG. So we are, we are very lucky in Malaysia. And again, I'd like to say thank you to all my, my team in the ministry for for their support and for all the contribution that they made towards a, a better uh, program that we are going to do for tourism in the country. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Tashi, for the sharing. As rightly said, uh, it looks like the recovery is getting uh, earlier than everyone expected. Uh, exactly. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. Right. So those who are just logged in, uh, uh, a warm welcome. We have more people coming in. Uh, hi, uh, Wan Masuri. Hi, Jamie Scott. Hi, Jeremy. Yeah. Hi, thank him. A lot of people are joining in. All right. So uh, let me move on to uh, uh, Miss Nia. Uh, tell us a bit about uh, your journey towards uh, being a Deputy Minister of Marketing in, in the Indonesian tourism. Yeah. Thank you, Pisi. Uh, I think the Deputy Minister in Indonesia is unlike in Malaysia. In Malaysia, uh, was, I think this is a political appointee, right, for the Deputy Minister. But in Indonesia, it's a political, uh, I mean, a bureaucratic career. Um, yeah, I I have been with the major almost 30 years. So you can guess easily my age then. Um, I <laughs> you look very young. <laughs> you look you look as young as you are 29 uh, you know 29 years old as you've been there <laughs> anyway yeah. life has to go on life has to go on so yeah it's, it's about numbers it's just about numbers yeah. That's it's just number mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i joined with the ministry in 1991 then um why i joined the ministry uh, because I, I wish at that time was to have a, a chance to study in overseas and then get scholarship so I, my first degree is in law in Indonesia. And then usually if we are a government official, it's easier to get a scholarship. That's why uh, I joined the ministry in legal affairs. And after two years, and I got scholarship to Australia to take my master's. So I feel like, oh, so thanks. Alhamdulillah, I got scholarship finally. Uh, at least I can experience uh, that uh, living in a for, for season. Unlike in Jakarta, only summertime. <laughs> yeah. My career is like climb a ladder uh, from the legal affairs junior and then seniors, then move to international relations. That's why I was in charge in UNWTO, APEC. So I had a chance a lot to visit uh, Malaysia for sure. And uh, then uh, becomes, uh, I think since the last previous minister, I was appointed the uh, tourism marketing deputy. And then with the new minister since October, I got uh, again uh, the, new, uh, the same assignment. 
but last year before the previous five years only tourism but now it's tourism and creative economy so i meet a lot of creative people with the minister because uh the step in malaysia to handle COVID, uh we have to learn from Malaysia anyway, but maybe this is also due to the numbers of population yeah, Dato Sri. Yeah. Here is 260.7 million. Yeah, yeah, it's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Malaysia is number one, our foreign rifles, so thanks to Malaysian. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely, uh, rightly said. I think, uh, yeah, Malaysia is one of the key market for Indonesia. Uh, yeah. Likewise for us as well. Like, yeah, likewise, yeah. Right. Uh, okay, so uh, let me ask uh, Dr. Sri Nancy, any special message uh, from MOTAC uh, that you like to give to the viewers from around the world uh, about the current situation? Well, I'm um, proud to share Malaysia's strategies to break the chain of infection appeared to have been uh, successful so far as recovery rates uh, exceed the new COVID-19 cases and increase in green zones. Our battle against COVID-19 seems to be going well with doubled efforts from frontliners and many are diligently adhering to the MCO. While the pandemic is not over yet, um, many can take comfort in these in this, uh, victories since Malaysia's response to COVID-19 has now earned international recognition. As I mentioned earlier on, Malaysia's response to the virus has been has been uh, utmost responsibility. Um, uh, sorry, Malaysia's vir response to the virus has been applauded by the World Health Organization or WHO. And um, we are indeed uh, very lucky, as I said, as of 10 of June 2020, Malaysia's government announced that the domestic tourism sector could resume operations. That makes us very happy, which brought some cheers to the travel industry crippled by this pandemic. Such activities need to be carried out with the utmost responsibility by practicing the new normal and strictly adhering to all standard operating procedures or SOPs defined by the National Security Council and the Ministry of Health. And uh, for information, before the uh, announcement of the um, opening of the uh, local tourism, I had to go around to just have a look at the situation in the country and try to see how the people observe the, the SOPs. So this is what I have been doing prior to the opening so that I could share with the people, though I have to, to make sure that you know, we, we were all observing the SOPs. So before we had the opening of the uh, local tourism, uh, the opening of interstate, I had to experience it myself to make sure that the the nation is really complying with the standard operating procedures and i see that it's not easy it's not an easy thing to do because people are so used to stand to each other very close to each other they shake hands and so these are things that we have to be very mindful of and i think uh miss nia mentioned earlier on we had to wash our hands or sanitize our hands so many times so these are also things that these are things that uh, we have to observe to make sure that especially in Malaysia, we want Malaysia to be a safe place uh, to visit, a safe destination for tourists. So thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shri. I think uh, yeah. uh, we are very grateful, you know, as an industry that, you know, uh, we are actually recovering uh, faster than many other countries. So yep. definitely it's a good sign for That's all right. countries. That's uh, right. No, okay. So let me uh, ask uh, Ms. Nia, uh, tell us something about Indonesia's, uh, from your side, what are the messages you want to give out to the viewers uh, about the situation? Okay, um, our strategy communication for domestic is more on uh, make a viral, the message from the government, how to live with COVID, like a hand, hands, uh, wash your hand properly, using sanitizer, keep the distance, wearing mask if you are in the public, something like that. And then for uh, foreigners, we, we have to keep inspiring to the market via digital at least. That's why we have a webinar, series of webinars with market. Uh, that is um, in terms of strategic communication. 
uh, then at the moment because uh, Indonesia is unlike Malaysia, we are still struggling coping with the COVID. But you can see that recovered numbers increasing, keeps on increasing. This is along with the what the government effort to do it, but still it's not finished yet. But on the other hand, we have to also uh, how do we uh, how we become still productive. So this is the message that we always we have to keep on mind. And then what's talk about the the three things mostly we wear. Okay, use your wear your mask, wash your hand as, as as often as you can, or sanitize and using water and uh, uh, yeah. and so and keep keep the distance. Yes, you right, uh, that or three because our culture is really you know it's very communal. We love uh, having care. Yeah, right. You you our our culture is very expressive, right? If you're happy, then you see your friends like wow. But oh, sorry, we have to. Yeah. This is. This is we have to be uh, get used to with that type of uh, of uh, 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 how to say habit. But the challenge is like yesterday. Uh, if I may share, yesterday I flew to uh, to to Bali with the minister because we want to have uh, have look and check how the protocol we call cleanliness, health, and safety uh, implemented all on the all touch point of traveler's journey. So I experienced, uh, we, had, we have to have like PCR swab test, not rapid test. Then uh, we experienced in the airport and then the aircraft also not fully uh, occupied. Uh, the factor is on 50%. Then we touched down Bali. There is also like protocol things and then uh, the minister check because he proposed that Bali should make uh, open first since Bali contributes 40 percent to the foreign resource and also become the fifth week of domestic. Uh, then uh, minister said, okay, if you we have to think uh, get ready all it's too long, make it Bali as a pilot because Bali is the capital of tourism but not the capital of pandemic. Then uh, in Bali make it pilot project in Nusa Dua. Because Nusa Dua is not far from the airport, uh, mm -hmm. and then this is like I think Ibu has to be there. It's like all as, uh, exclusive there. You can find anything, any name it, any brand in, in the hotels in that area, and then attraction also, uh, restaurant, even hospital with international standard. And the minister check all the SOP in all uh, in all uh, properties there. So this is that we are really now to work to implement the cleanliness, health, and safety protocol all regions. Then they, we gonna produce the tutorial and also get a training to the workers because we have to do it both sides for the travelers and also the, the, the workers. Then uh, after that, we have to like simulation and evaluation then reopening the destination. So this is like a stepping of reopening the destination. Like Jakarta now, since most open, film park also open. So we still keep, like tonight, um, we have even here to socialize the people. Uh, then the malls only carrying capacity only 50%. The Anchor theme park, you have to register first uh, by online because they will manage the carrying capacity. So this is always keep sending the message to remind them, please, Keep the distance, something like that. The protocol things. Right. Thank you so yeah. much for the update. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure a lot of people uh, from around the world who are watching uh, will watch later. Will definitely get the update. I think from from your side, you know, the first hand update is very very important. It's, it's you know, it's it's very informative for the, the industry. So uh, let me uh, move on to uh, Dr. Shree Nancy. Uh, uh, research, restart, and recover tourism uh, as an industry leader. Uh, what do you see forward? Well, uh, thank you again. Um, a research study by World Travel and Tourism, or WTTC, in 2009 reported that the travel and tourism industry has been more resilient than ever, citing political instability as the most challenging crisis with the longest recovery period. Little did we know that the COVID-19 pandemic hit us so badly and caused so much uncertainty compared to the previous outbreaks, such as SARS, H1N1, and Ebola. 
According to UNWTO, COVID-19 has caused the world seven years of tourism growth, which means seven years of jobs, losses and missed opportunities. Uh, in, in, and um, this number may be higher for Malaysia. In this regard, the ministry has developed a post-MCO tourism and cultural recovery plan to help revive the industry. As I mentioned to you, a, a great team, strong team, a very good, um, dedicated team. So we have worked this recovery plan to help to revive the industry. But first and foremost, it is important to restore people's confidence to travel again. The pandemic has caused people to be vigilant and limit their activities. But we need to adapt to survive. As industry leaders, we need to give assurance that the industry practices the new norms to ensure safety and hygiene as the utmost priority. Through our agency, Tourism Malaysia, we will strengthen our domestic tourism initiatives under the, we call it Chuti Chuti Malaysia or Holiday in Malaysia. This is very local. This is a, uh, th that's the campaign that we are um, uh, initiating and also intensify our public relation activities and social media promotions, including online collaborations with corporate companies. We will also enhance the quality of tourism products and services by adapting the new normal to boost the confidence of tourists to travel again, hence encouraging them to stay longer, visit more places and spend more. That's what we want because that's how we reboot our economy. As for the international market, the ministry plans to promote arrivals from short haul markets such as ASEAN, mainly through cross-border tourism. For starters, the concept of travel bubble with green zone countries identified by the World Health Organization is gaining popularity among countries that have managed to contain the spread of COVID-19 and are worth considering. However, its implementation is subject to bilateral discussions like what we are doing now with paramount consideration on the aspects of health, immigration, data tracking and continuous monitoring by respective agencies concerned in both countries. So we hope that uh, well, Malaysia and Indonesia will start the travel bubble. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Dr. Shri. I think uh, travel bubbles is, uh, uh, I think most of us uh, was actually waiting for to hear yeah. from you that, you know, such a concept is going to going to take yeah. off. That's a very yeah, good yeah. Uh, news for yeah. all of us. Very hopeful. Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, let, let me uh, go to uh, Miss Nia. Uh, you know, for the tourism industry players who are uh, fighting this uh, pandemic, uh, any special message uh, you want to keep? Yeah. Yes, I think uh, from the, in the uh, population perspective, we coordinate with countries uh, to like a uh, level tax, give a uh, tax holiday or tax free for the industry players, and then we also give uh, training to the industry, uh, and then also we give the best food uh, to the workers because some of them also uh, unpaid leave at home. That is the kind of program, and we also have a program buying their product like hotels, FNB, transportation, and giving the benefit to the medical person. Because we believe they are now is our hero. So we have to make them can be focused on their job. Uh, so we get uh, comfortable places, which is nearby the hospitals. So this is like quarantine for the medical person. So we reallocate our budget. And then in terms of recovery, I think uh, like Malaysia and also I think based on the research and also we learn from other countries, the domestic tourists will be uh, will rebound first and then short uh, hole for sure. In neighboring countries becomes our low hanging fruit. That's why we have to have like a travel bubble in that was three. Yeah, likewise, so, yeah. For domestic also there is staging. Uh, because now people uh, stay at home, they really want to go out, but feel insecure if they're going to meet someone else. So more self-driving and then staycation. Uh, so we have like several program with our partner credit card, give it a discounted for restaurant or shopping. This is more on the staycation or experiencing in the hotel for weekend. Jakarta mostly during weekend, the price is very low. But Bandung is different. Bandung, because so many Malaysians, 
<laughs> so we can use it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is very low. This is a kind of the uh, a program that we encourage uh, people to spend in the city or staycation. When they got uh, confident enough, then they can have like road trip, like maybe from Jakarta to Bandung by car. This is uh, the staging. Then after that is uh, uh, across the province, like Bali. So this like this afternoon, we had a meeting with Garuda, how we have like special program with Garuda and how we make like assurance actually that if you're flying, it's safe because in the aircraft or or all the touch point of the travelers really implemented the CHS. I think the cleanness, health, and safety becomes the main consideration people before yes. they travel. Regardless, the place is beautiful or the culture is interesting, but the people still consider how is the protocol, how protocol uh, is in place. That's why our minister yesterday to prove it all, okay, then it seems we are ready, but still we have to show first uh, or make a priority the how to manage or contain uh, COVID well, then uh, we have to gain trust from the international communities like Malaysia before we reopen the destination and border. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Nia, for the sharing. Uh, it's uh, very important for us to get this update from you. All right. So the history, uh, Nancy, uh, Malaysia has been quite successful in containing the virus. Uh, and uh, what was the tourism ministry's contribution, uh, you know, to handle the situation and to make sure the industry players are uh, receive the right support and things like that? So can I have your take on this? Well, thank you again, uh, PC. Following the announcement of the MCO, the ministry announced the immediate um, cancellation of the visit malaysia year 2020 campaign actually was not very was not a very good thing to 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 announce when people were very excited about going for uh, holidays and all those but anyway it has to be done this is consistent with the government's intention to effectively curb the outbreak of the pandemic and more tax concern uh, about the current global situation Although the Visit Malaysia Year 2020 campaign has been cancelled, efforts to promote the country as a safe tourist destination, that's very important, safe tourist uh, uh, vaccine, uh, destination must continue. As I mentioned earlier uh, on the Chuti Chuti Malaysia, holiday in Malaysia, and we must make sure that it, the country is safe to, to, to visit. An effective post-MCO tourism and cultural recovery plan is essential to enable the country's economy to recover as quickly as possible. If this is not done, the country's tourism and cultural sectors will suffer greater losses, delaying the recovery of the industry and uh, economy as a whole as the pandemic recedes. The ministry has identified various strategies in the recovery plan that will recalibrate the country's tourism and cultural industries. In addition, um, uh, Ms. Nia and PC and all those who are with us here to assist local tourism industry players, grant in the form of matching grant known as Galakan Melanchong Malaysia or what we call Gamelan will also be extended primarily for domestic promotion and marketing activities. Apart from that, the ministry has also implemented several initiatives to help ease the burden on the tourism industry, such as the domestic tourism vibes, online course. I think uh, Ms. Nia mentioned about upskilling is now. Waiver of license fees for tour operators, travel agencies and tour guides, and exemption of compound for tour operators, travel agencies and tour guides who fail to renew their licensee, licenses within the specified period due to the MCO. Uh, and uh, in helping the industry players, our government has also acted decisively through the implementation of various packages to support businesses, particularly in the recently announced economic stimulus package or penjana, we call it, where the government uh, will provide uh, Ringgit Malaysia 1 billion or USD 234 million 
for tourism financing. It's very encouraging, though. So anyway, um, well, we hope to get, um, I mean, more uh, more participation uh, among the industry players for them to um, to help stimulate the economy. So that's what the eco economic stimulus package is for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adashri. Uh, I think uh, this is uh, very in important information for uh, all of us in the industry. Yeah, about especially the industry players. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let me go to uh, Miss Nia. So Malaysia is being a very close partner uh, as a regional tourism market for Indonesia. So how do you see this partnership going forward post-COVID? Okay, I think as I mentioned to you that Malaysia is number one for us. So this is really a great partner. Uh, I think, uh, of course, we have to have like travel bubble, which uh, which involves not only Ministry of Tourism, but Foreign Affairs Ministry and Immigration. Uh, so this is really, I think, under discussion in the cabinet. Uh, but still, at the moment, we have to show to, to the world first that we can contain or manage COVID well first and then protocol the uh, health protocol uh I, like malaysia you have cuti cuti for domestic we also have uh, with hashtag the indonesia aja so when it comes to the indonesia aja while we are waiting for the opening the border uh then indonesia aja is the big umbrella and then for each city they can make it like the jakarta aja the yeah. aja this is the way how we encourage uh, yes, uh, and then I would say, oh yeah, the the president also um, like give a comment to to us the government official because actually the government still have money. I mean the institution of government institution to help the private sector. If we have to uh, speed up the government procurement, especially for the small medium enterprises, and uh, so. Um, we uh, gonna have like encouragement the mice event uh, of the government to do it uh, in tourism destination. So uh, this is uh, this is the step that we gonna do to help the industries. But still, uh, since the mall in Jakarta, especially and public area is open, it will be reviewed every two weeks. If the condition is better, then we will continue. But if not, then the the timeline of our program could be changed we have to adjust with the situation the present situation and have to be realistic of course put the people first is number one thank you all right thank you so much yeah it's very encouraging to hear that thank you so much for the sharing we have uh, people who are joining us from argentina we have people from paris so it's a quite a international crowd we have here all right so uh let us uh uh, let me ask the Dr. Shri Nancy. Uh, Indonesia is again uh, being a very close partner uh, in regional market, tourism market for us in Malaysia. How do you see this partnership from your point of view? Or what are the things you, you can? Yeah. Well, of course, uh, Malaysia enjoys a cordial relationship with Indonesia in the field of tourism. I think it's a uh, mutual. Uh, Indonesia is also enjoying that with Malaysia both at the bilateral and multilateral platforms. As both countries are closely linked, Malaysia received more than 3.6 million tourist arrivals from Indonesia in 2019. This figure has placed Indonesia at number two in terms of top generating inbound tourists to Malaysia for the same year. The presence of uh, two tourism Malaysia's offices in Indonesia one in Jakarta and the other one in Medan. That testifies the importance of the Indonesian market for our tourism industry. On the multilateral platforms, Malaysia and Indonesia are working closely with the member countries and economies of ASEAN, APEC, uh, UNWTO, IMT, GT, and BIB IAGA to revitalize the tourism industry from the impact of COVID-19. ASEAN, for instance, is working towards the following efforts. One is formulating ASEAN wide ranging SOPs to facilitate travelers without neglecting essential aspects of health and safety of frontliners, tourists, and tourism employees. For example, the requirement for a standardized health certificate within ASEAN. Secondly, 
using digital technology to support the recovery efforts of tourism activities and to help prevent the spread of COVID-19 in ASEAN member, uh, ASEAN member states. For example, mobile applications for contact tracing and as tracking tools to control the spread of COVID-19. And uh, thirdly, regaining travelers' confidence towards the health and safety of ASEAN tourism destinations through effective communication on the current status of COVID-19 and ASEAN tourism destinations operations. And fourthly, implementing a systematic an effective ASEAN tourism marketing and promotion plan through strategic collaboration with tourism industry players such as airlines, tour agents, tour operators, mice operators and other stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, when the situation is safe for international traveling, Malaysia and Indonesia will be working closely to facilitate the movement of tourists at entry points while adhering to the common safety. The key word is safety, health and hygiene protocols mutually adopted by both countries. So I, that's about it for now. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dushri. I think it's uh, yeah. very useful insights for the industry. Thank yeah. you so much for the sharing. Uh, all right. So uh, let me uh, ask uh, uh, Ms. Nia uh, on how is, uh, you know, if you talk about going digital, so how important is going digital at this point of time for the tourism industry and what is your thought on this? Yeah. Okay, um, before I answer your question, I would like to share also about numbers of Malaysians coming to Indonesia. Malaysian last year coming to Indonesia is about 2 million, 2.09 million. So I think more Indonesian coming to Malaysia, but the growth is uh, still right. better, double digit. The growth is 15%, so thanks to Malaysia. And then uh, I appreciate what Dato Sri had just mentioned about the bilateral thing and then regional. I think as a member of ASEAN countries, as a, yeah. as a neighbor countries, I think we should <clears throat> I think we should agree upon that uh, certain things that you raised up uh, because yeah. uh, talking about COVID is uh, we cannot do it just standalone or by one country itself. But we have to cooperate, we have to do it together to make pandemic disappear from, from the world, I think. So because, for example, if you are getting better there, there, but here it's not finished yet, then how come we have, uh, how come we cut the, the spread of the, the, the pandemic? So I think this is a kind of, that we have to more cooperate together more working together, work more closer to stick with COVID, I think. Yeah, uh, and then uh, about digital, yes, I think digital, it's it's really, you can see that really plays an important role during this time. Because talking about uh, tourism, the basic or DNA of tourism is movement. When COVID happens, there is no movement, it means there is no tourist. In fact, talking about tourism is industry, hospital industry, it's uh, dreaming industries. So we have to keep inspiring to the market, to the customer. So uh, with this time, I think digital plays an important role. So like in our budget, even yeah. the ministry, we put the budget on digital is higher than other uh, platform. I think uh, I think we have to go more on digital, but still sometimes uh, technology cannot replace the humankind, right? Like now, uh, when I went to Bali yesterday to see how the protocol uh, in place in attraction, you, you see the Balinese uh, culture, the energy is on the eyes and also the smile. So if you put the face shield or you put the mask, so the message will come through. Yeah, yeah. So I said to the mission, I think you have to find the designer where is the 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 the, the function of the facial or mask still in place in terms of health protocol, but the DNA, the USP of tourism still deliver. This is the challenge that we face uh, in the attraction. For example, like ketchup. Ketchup is uh, the the voice really the music is comes from the mouth. And then, you know, nose, 
how come if you cover then the quality of the voice will be different then the smile of the Balinese dancer there is standard how big how wide is your smile how is your uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes curling or your eyes then this is the challenge still so digital i think uh, plays an important role yeah. during this time. thank you very thank interesting you. Uh, <laughs> yeah Nia, that's a very interesting uh, uh you know very observation interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me uh, ask uh, 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 YB. Okay. This, uh, you know, if you have, uh, uh, as everybody is talking uh, about domestic tourism, uh, you know, in Malaysia, whether it be Malaysia or Indonesia. So at this point of time, like, how do you see domestic tourism filling the gap uh, in Malaysia? Uh, Shri? Well, uh, in Malaysia, the domestic tourism contribution amounted to 60.4 billion ringgit Malaysia or USD 14.4 billion in expenditure in 2018. That's a rise of 11.7% from the previous year. This shows that the domestic sector plays a key role in generating income for the economy. Since many countries impose a ban or restriction on international travel, more emphasis is being put on domestic tourism to help offset the downturn in the economy due to the absence of foreign contributions at the moment. While the domestic tourism may not fill the gap to fully support the industry, it may reduce the impact on the economy as a whole. Domestic tourism will keep the small businesses running and help to stimulate the local economy. That is very important to us. Um, it, I thought, well, uh, for us, um, well, that was really uh, what we want to see in the country. And we want to help to reboot uh, the local tourism activities. Actually, um, this is uh, very, um, very crucial for us. I was very, very um, uh, interested in what uh, Miss Nia was mentioning about now. It's about the, the, the actual smile on the face that not, that's not been seen. So. We want to encourage, um, you know, people to to um, engage, but of course, encouraging people to engage uh, physically, but they still have to observe uh, the social distancing and all the SOPs that have been in place for us to make sure that you know people will have more confidence with us because they see that we are really still observing the um, the SOPs, and again. It is all about safety uh, in the country, and the safety in uh, where people are going, especially the public places. This will build confidence among the people to um, to visit places, especially uh, public places like restaurants, you know, parks, you know. So this is what we are trying to encourage um, to make sure that people will keep uh, visiting the local um, the local destinations within their own their own cities and their own country yeah thank you thank you thank you so much uh, Shri, for the sharing yeah we are actually running short of time which uh, so we'll uh, go towards uh, yeah our uh, final question probably the second last question to uh, miss nia so what are the key factors which prove that tourism will bounce back uh, than maybe better than before so how do you see that <laughs> i think key factor is how we implement our trainers health and safety that is the most important thing yeah and i would like to add also domestic uh, cannot replace the foreign exchange but they can keep the machine hot but that doesn't invite or doesn't give the foreign exchange so i think we still need uh, domestic and foreign international tourists anyway thank you right rightly said all right so uh Sri nancy uh yeah. How, what do you say uh, about this? I mean, how, what do you think that uh, how the tourism will bounce back? Uh, uh, what is your key uh, objective uh, of you know, like we have we have been there are certain factors which uh, you might you know have something in mind that yeah tourism will definitely going to bounce back better than before. Well, um, the importance of just now you're talking about digital at this point of time right. for the tourism industry. Right. So. Um, uh, I'd right. like to touch on that as well. The importance of going okay. digital okay. Is, is also right. especially felt uh, when we go through MCO. As movements right. are 
uh, restricted. Most people turn to social media to obtain the latest news about the outbreak and then stay in touch with their loved ones and be productive at work. So uh, I'd like to share this as well for us as a tourism organization. We have placed greater reliance on our digital assets to disseminate information on industry updates to the public. Digitalization has also helped us to maintain open and instant uh, communication with the public. And uh, with the limited physical interactions due to the current circumstances, Digital marketing is at the heart of the process and has become a new norm, particularly in the marketing of tourism products and services. Um, we actually we are always encouraging the industry to utilize digital technology in marketing their products, such as using social media platforms. This is very important to stress and you know, to introduce new packages or services to reach a broader audience. Actually, um, Ms. Nia and also PC, you can see what the MCO did to the people, to the whole nation. Actually, people, uh, it allows the industry, industry to, stay, to stay fresh and relevant and bridges the information gap. But at the same time, the people are building a new norm whereby they're using social media. So that's why it is very important for us to uh, to learn new things. And then we have webinars, e-travel fairs, and other e-commerce applications, operators, and product owners that who offer their services and accept online reservations more efficiently to provide more convenient service to consumers. This would be cost-effective in the long run, allowing savings in terms of logistics and manpower. This is a new new trend among us, a new culture, right. new norm. We call it, yeah. Mm -hmm. This and is uh, I, right. oh, sorry. Sorry, Buddha. Yeah. yeah, you can uh, continue, Ms. Nia. Oh, sorry. I just want to add uh, the most important thing now is gaining trust because yeah. trust is the new currency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, back to. Uh, the bouncing back uh, of the um, right. tourism industry. Uh, I mean, if you allow me, because I have yet to answer that from you just now. Yeah, we believe do. we believe in silver linings in every cloud. Actually, as mentioned to you, whatever happened, you know, we have we have to learn something from there. Despite the hardship, MCO allows the industry to identify the strengths, to harness and weaknesses, um, to improve upon. Actually, I was. As I mentioned to you earlier on, I have to do a lot of thinking and strategizing and then working with our team. So, uh, for example, many businesses have improved their digital presence and offer online services in order to remain relevant. As a result, many businesses have found new ways to diversify their portfolios and reach to a broader market as part of their efforts to attract tourists again. Business operators need to provide safety and cleanliness assurance to their clients. This is what we have been seeing all this while. No, we see everybody is uh, trying to observe the, the 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 SOPs. This will force them not to be negligent and to continuous continuously uh, search for ways to provide more affordable and convenient services for their consumers. So. Uh, Malaysian government actually has introduced robust or attractive economic incentives for the tourism sector to stimulate the public's interest to travel. Among the incentives include the tourism tax exemption from 1st July 2020 to 30th June 2021. This is, this is a very um, good information for our industry players. Extension of service tax exemption for hotels to 30th June 2021 and extension of income tax relief of 1,000 ringgit for domestic tourism expenses to 31st December 2021. To utilize the tax relief, Malaysians will have to spend on local businesses, which would boost local tourism. This is how we also help to bounce back. Currently, many members of the tourism industry are actively offer offering promotions. I think uh, Ms. Nia also mentioned this. Promotions and discounts to entice travelers to use their services. Premium and luxurious services are now available at incredibly affordable prices and are likely to increase demand. We believe that many Malaysians will take the advantage of enjoying the services and travel within the country. When such promotions succeed in growing demand, operators would be more likely to offer attractive packages or introduce new services to maintain customer um, 
maintain customer interest. Yeah. Well, there is a doubt. We will return to the heyday of mass travels. We will certainly, we will certainly hope that things will bounce back to normal as soon as possible. Yeah. That's well, it. That is uh, so positive, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, it's it give us give uh, the industry has a lot of hope, especially it yeah, comes from you. We, we have uh, to really be. We have to be. Right. Hmm. Right. Thank you so much for that sharing. Yeah, All right. You. So, uh, okay. So, uh, Miss Nia, what is your your message uh, for the world who who are waiting to travel after the lockdown? So, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, when when the border is open or when you have a chance to go out, please don't uh, exaggerate it, and then always bear in mind that uh, everyone has the same responsibility with the new normal. So please, uh, uh, protocol, health protocol is in place wherever you are. Wearing mask, you. physical mm -hmm. distancing, wash your hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it's very, yeah. Important, very important for, for to follow the protocol. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Nancy, uh, what is your message uh, to the world who are waiting to visit Malaysia after the lockdown? Well, we would like to express our appreciation and thank you for your continued support and interest in Malaysia. We are doing our best to grow stronger again so that we can better accommodate you in the future. Certainly, travel trends will change for the time being. And according to travel analysts, Malay international travel will take a lot more time to recover. Nevertheless, let us all focus on battling this pandemic and hope the situation will improve so that we can open our borders in the immediate future. Uh, needless to say, Malaysia is safe for tourists. I'd like to repeat that Malaysia is safe for tourists. This goes beyond having low reported infection numbers, but also having credible systems in place if tourists get sick. Until then, stay tuned to our social media platforms for your daily dose of Malaysia and take a sneak peek of what you can expect when you get here. We invite you to visit our official website at www.malaysia.travel. Get inspirations and uh, trip ideas from our posts and plan your travels here via our Facebook page, Tourism Malaysia and Instagram account, malaysia.truly.asia. Well, please come back to Malaysia. We can't wait to see you all. Malaysia is always a safe destination for tourists. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sri Nancy. Uh, I think uh, all of us, uh, the viewers, you know, we had a lot of insight uh, information from you, and uh, we are so blessed to have uh, uh, somebody with so much vision. And uh, you know, uh, we're looking forward to have a better tourism uh, years uh, for the coming time. So, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, really, uh, you know, thank you for having me. Yeah. Really thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you, Dr. Sri Minister. Thank you. Hope thank to see you. you. Yeah. yeah. Inshallah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, Miss Nia, uh, any final words uh, you need to? Oh, yes. Thank you so much. I just, uh, if you need or should you need further information, please visit our website www.indonesia.travel. There will be updating what we have done so far and what is our strategy communication there. So, thank you. We we, we are preparing with the protocol, have protocol, and we are coming back you soon. We are coming you back soon. We miss you, of course. Thank you so much, uh, Miss Nia. Uh, definitely, we'll see you back soon. And uh, thank you so much for spending your valuable time with us. See you soon. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks. All right. So, uh, so friends, uh, we had an amazing learning session from our guest uh, on the topic today, as uh, their views and knowledge uh, have been extremely helpful uh, for all of us to understand more about the industry and its future. So we should take this opportunity to thank them, uh, especially uh, you know those leaders who are working so hard to face such a crisis situation and doing everything possible for the industry. As the industry, I'm sure all of us are extremely grateful to them for their contributions. So if you look at uh, the brighter side of uh, COVID crisis, I feel this crisis has uh, been an eye opener for all of us. If I may tell you the most noticeable uh, differences, uh, I could see uh, you know, uh, that uh, how the industry has come closer together with more solidarity. And I'm sure this will bring more positive changes uh, for the time to come. Uh, most of us have uh, adopted this new digital lifestyle 
and the crisis has given us an amazing opportunity for businesses to adopt digital practices. And we all are excited to see the new revolution uh, in every stage of the tourism industry, the post COVID era. So this crisis has been uh, made the tourism industry more creative, uh, more innovative. The businesses are coming up with uh, more amazing products and combinations to lure tourists, which, which they never done before. So that this will lead to a many exciting and uh, you know different type of travel experiences. So we are a team media. We always encourage the industry players to take their business on digital landscape. We organize free online trainings as well as uh, free detail health checks for the businesses. Those who need help to go digital, stay tuned and uh, visit our team digital. The social media pages are uh, on our websites. You can find details. So I believe uh, today's session uh, was informative to all of you. Uh, upcoming sessions, uh, we will cover more uh, segments from the tourism industry, like MICE players, convention bureaus, tourism departments, online travel agents, uh, technology providers, and special interest tourism segments, etc. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you like uh, what we do, please don't uh, forget to like our Facebook page and share this uh, with your friends and colleagues from the industry so that they can get the information what our leaders have just shared. So looking forward to see you again on the next show. Till then, goodbye and thank you so much.